Hey folks, welcome to Camp Geeks. Today we're taking a peek at a product that actually comes to market here probably when this video drops. Uh, it is going to be on Kickstarter. It is a ultra small, ultra lightweight, titanium built wood combustion stove. However, it can also do solid fuel. There is a gas or a small um, propane or canister stove uh, thing uh, accessory that you can get for it. It's a really neat product. When they actually reached out to me and, and asked me if I'd be interested in, in taking a peek at it prior to the Kickstarter campaign, I was all on board as soon as I saw pictures and video of it uh, immediately. It's neat in that it's it's really small, and of course, because it's titanium, it's ultra lightweight. But the really key thing is, it is the smallest wood burning stove that actually has secondary combustion. So you basically get the most thorough combustion possible with that first and secondary combustion of all the gases. So you're gonna have a very efficient wood burning stove. So in this box in front of me is all the pieces that they sent me. Let's take it. Okay, so this is how it came boxed, and we do have three individual packages. One being the stove, one being actually a, uh, well, we'll go over that here in a minute. And then the other is the, the stove itself. This, this is actually the canister stove conversion if you want it. Let's say you're in a, in a spot where you can't use wood burning. Maybe they block the, um, you know, there's a fire burner or something like that, and you have to use a canister stove. That's what this kind of comes in handy for. And the nice thing about this stove is, I mean, it packs down really small. Um, smaller than a lot of the full, you know, liquid stoves out there. Um, but it's all in these pieces. Now I have not actually put this together yet. I'm gonna say that real quick and be as honest as possible. I wanted to get this on video so that I can tell you what it's probably supposed to look like. Um, but I have not actually played with this at all. I've only looked at it. So there we go. All right, so there's the other there. So this actually has, looks like centimeter marks, centimeter, millimeter marks on it. Looks like there's, it's kind of a tool, I guess maybe this, but a little bit of a saw so you can actually saw through wood. Oh, that's handy. But then also you can uh, see where we can actually adjust any uh, wrenches and it's basically got a wrench on it. All right, so I'm gonna keep that right here. And then this guy here is our stove, Velcro. And that Velcro does come off, so I'm gonna go ahead and stick that in the bag so it doesn't blow away on this. Got a little bit of breeze today. Okay. All right, so this would be the base. We do have a foldable legged base, so we do have the base. These guys here, from what I can tell, actually go together for the top. So you can kind of see where there's these slits that they slide together. And this piece right here will allow us to put a, uh, a pot on top, or as well as there's actually, if you see these grooves in the side, right there and right there, that's actually where the canister stove will, would, would actually go in uh, and hold in place so you can do that. So I'm gonna set that up to the side. Then, looks like we have these two sides and two, and there's another piece there. Okay, so you can see this is where the secondary combustion pieces come into play. So we can actually have this insulated titanium piece. There's actually, it's hollow in here, and the secondary combustion goes in right here. So we actually have air that'll be drawn in from the outside and then pulled through and actually thrown air in here. So that's what it appears as though. We'll see if we're correct on that. We have these sides here that we'll place into here, let's see if I'm doing this right. There we go. Okay. It might be right, it might be wrong. This looks like it would go towards the middle. But definitely, so that's the thing is, it can only go on one direction, right? So we're gonna take a peek at that. All right, so we got that. And then we've got, this guy goes in here and it slips down. Then we got the other side that we gotta do. Do like that. And they slide into place. And then, I would think it goes just like that. So 
So I was looking at, okay, so that's with that, that leg. So down at the bottom, there's a little bit of a lip. That is where this is gonna go to allow the ash to come through. So that's gonna slip down there like that. So we have a full, I apologize for that. There we go, you can kinda see that there's a full area there. This is be something right here to allow us to load wood in, right, while it's going. And if you have the pot on top, you can still throw wood in there. And then the ash can drip down, but it actually will go, then go into the port of the, the leg, the base, right? And then to use this, after you get the, the fire going, you would have this guy that would sit on top like this. It actually is designed to go, just sit on top and slide, you know, around wherever we need it. Put the pot on there, and that's how we would cook. And then on top of that, we're gonna take a peek at this bag. This is, like I said, if we weren't able, maybe able to find firewood, or um, maybe, like I said, maybe you're in an area that you can't uh, actually make a wood fire, an open flame fire, this would be our canister stove, which has actually a really nice um, way to screw on the canister and keep it out. So just quick and easy burner, and this burner will actually pop into this just by bending it out. So you can see that, and then this would actually feed through our wood port, our, our feeder port, right? And now we actually have a gas stove in its place. Right, this, this is really well thought out. I've got to give them that. It's very, very well thought out. All right, let me get some stuff put together and we'll put, make a little fire. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and take the gas stove out real quick. Ah. So that'd be, I mean, obviously when you, once you get this on here, you're not gonna take this back off, but that would be one thing is make sure you pick it up from the bottom piece, right? Their bottom pieces and hold it together. All right, we got our combustion chamber here. I'm just gonna take some sticks that I grabbed I'm gonna throw a couple sticks in here. Bigger ones down at the bottom. Okay, should be fairly dry stuff. Don't think I'll have too much of an issue. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just use a standard lighter. I mean, yeah, I mean, I did bring down the old uh, spark igniter that I have that I haven't used for a while, but you know what, to save time. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and ignite it the old fashioned way. Now we are, we do have quite a bit of wind down here today. So I'm just gonna, we're gonna find out real quick how well this ignites with wind like it is. I'm gonna actually close that and let it do its thing from that side. And I did bring down some cardboard too because sometimes I find just have a little bit of paper product in there and does all the wonders in the world, right? Oh yeah, that side's definitely going pretty good. We're just gonna give it a minute to boost up. I'm gonna go ahead and put this guy on the fire. And I'm gonna go ahead and just throw this guy on here right now. I'm gonna use that to center that a little bit. And I thought, why not use a titanium pot with a titanium stove, right? Let's get you a different angle. So you can see down here, I mean, she's going pretty darn good. And of course, we'll just want to keep it high enough because I have a lot of light fuels in there right now. I'll probably have to start putting a little bit thicker sticks in. So obviously this is metal. So, you know, you're not going to want to just grab onto that with your fingers. And then it might be handy just to have another stick just to kind of get in here and stir things around. And I also wanted to show you one other thing. The last bag that I didn't talk about yet is this little guy. And this has a dual purpose. This, so this is kind of your fire blowing stick, right? So we can actually, right here, we can extend this out, blow, and it'll actually pinpoint that, uh, that air into one area. really get the fire going good. So this would have been obviously really handy when we started it, but um, the other thing is it has a secondary use. It comes with this little fork that screws on, and now you can actually cook marshmallows or hot dogs or whatever right over the actual grill itself. 
Um, that is just handy and very thoughtful. I thought that was just pretty cool. So yeah, that's that little fire blowing stick. So I kind of let it die out here a little bit, but I threw some more sticks on just to show you what the fire uh, stick can do. So just like you're normally blowing on a fire to get air down at the bottom so it can, you know, well, start combusting again, right? That's what that little handy trick guy can do. Just really well designed. The water was almost, I mean, it was, it's hot. Um, and I just took that off. I let it die down to the point where I, where it would basically went out just to show that tool. So yeah, now I can uh, actually see that secondary combustion. Let me show you that. So you can see that from the small, you know, the fire's getting big enough where you were getting that secondary combustion from the heat. So all the fire, the flame that looks like it's coming out of the holes, that's from the actual gases from, from below. Pretty cool, I mean, really nice. Just really thought out and well designed. Last part of this, the last accessory I haven't shown you yet, this guy that was the top, essentially that makes this into a grill. Now, whether or not you're doing it with fire, I mean, you could do it with other things, but I wouldn't want to use, uh, you know, a, a solid burning, you know, solid fuel. I would want to actually use something natural like, like wood. Uh, but this just basically sets over top. Be careful with it. And now we have a grilling surface. Now, of course, you're going to want to be careful with it, right? You're not going to be doing, you know, something big and heavy, but you can grill something on top of that. That's just a real, everything about this stove is well thought out. The only downside is the downsides that you pretty much can think of, right? I have to follow, get fuel for it, that's, that is what it is. However, if uh, after I'm done cooking, I'm gonna have to let this cool before I can pack this up and take it with me. Now every stove you have, basically the same way. You're gonna have to let it cool before you can pack it up, put it back in your pack. This is one of those, you're not gonna let, you're not gonna really do anything with it until it fully cools down, right? Because it's gotta burn all the rest of the fuel out and then you're, I mean, obviously if you have water, you can cool it down that way, but if you don't want to waste water, um, yeah, it's just, it's going to take time. So that's, that's the one drawback, which is a drawback that is expected. Boy, I tell you what, cooking in the sun is, you got the heat from this and the heat from that, and it's warm out here. But the serotonin ultralight wood burning stove grill, gas burning stove grill, you know, it's, for what it is, I actually really like it. <laughs> I really do. I think they, I think they designed it very, very, very well. And it is going to be on Kickstarter. So if you're, if you're looking at something like this, um, whether or not it's something for a trip you have coming up or something, you know, in my opinion, for me, it's more about having something this. So if something comes up that I want to do something more ultralight and um, more back to nature type, I'd be more prone to use this as the wood burning option it is. I think it's really nice that we have the gas burning uh, capability of it. And in all reality, even this, uh, I can actually show, I'll show you that once this dies down. Um, the gas burning option, it just adds to the capability of the stove. That's, that's the beautiful thing about it. So let's let it cool down a little bit. I'll show you the gas burning option and then we'll figure, we'll finish up. And there's one of the bad things about recording in the sun. I couldn't tell if it was recording or not. I thought I hit the recorder button. I actually poured water on it to cool it down and a uh, nice bit of steam, but it cooled it really quick. Now, I actually took this top piece and just set it off to the side real quick uh, and with my uh, tongs, and it cooled down really quick because it's really quick because it is very, very thin uh, titanium. Um, but yeah, just a little bit of water all over the thing and everything's now actually cool to touch. So my whole thing about how long it would take to cool down would be if you don't want to waste water. Also, if you do pour water on it, the plate on the bottom down here did, curve a little bit and I'll show you that here in a second um, but let's uh, show you this so again this just pops into this guy right so uh, of course it happens so let's see I mean it's it is a drawback but it's also not a drawback because it really once you do it once you put it into it you're not gonna really have the problems but uh, this obviously you're gonna want to make sure you kind of pinch this so it doesn't slip off right but this just fits in with comp with a uh, I guess compression I guess so there we are and then I already put the gas canister on over here and I just turn this knob Ugh. it's pretty tight there we go 
And now, I can cook with gas instead of wood. So I'm gonna turn that back off, because I do wanna show you what I was talking about. All right, uh, down here at the bottom, let's just do this. This guy, as soon as I poured the, the cold water on it, well, it wasn't really cold, it was warm water, pretty warm water, but it did warp just a little bit because this is really thin titanium. Now, this is not structure at all. This is just a plate to hold the wood, but also, you know, let the ashes through. Um, so I don't see a big detriment to that at all, but that is something to point out, right? So if you do, I'm here to test this stuff and I'm here to try out all the stuff possible and I wish I... I wish the camera was actually rolling. It didn't, doesn't look like it actually was because I went to watch it. I'm like, oh no. So yeah. Hey folks, uh, I just wanted to talk about the top bracket real quick where, for the pot to set on. Um, in the video, it, it did actually come apart a couple times. And basically what that came, apart, came down to was me lifting from the wrong spot or lifting from one of the, the pieces rather than squeezing it as a set. But what I found is if you just grab it like this and just pinch just with a very slight press pressure, this does not ever come apart. Whether it's that direction or that direction, I've never had an issue since that video. Um, basically every time I pick it up, I just pick it up with like this and it works just fine. And so even loading the stove piece and things like that, this will work just great. Now, if you are putting this on, obviously when the, the when the fire's going, what I've found is putting it on the one side and then using something to, sl a stick or whatever to slide it into the middle. That works best from what I've found, but I've never had an issue uh, other than in the video. It's kind of weird where I was not paying attention and picking up from uh, different spots. But um, looking at it, you know, <laughs> technically you could make the gaps smaller, right? Uh, and make it tighter fitting together, but I think that would actually cause more harm than good because getting it apart would be almost a nightmare. Um, so I, to be honest, after looking at this, I think the design is actually really well done. Uh, you just gotta be thinking about how to place it. So yeah, good job. Okay, so thanks for joining me on this journey to take a peek at the serotonin ultralight titanium uh, camping stove, backpacking stove, hiking stove, whatever you wanna call it. I like it. I really do. Um, this piece is the is the most flimsy and easiest to fall apart. Fell apart on me a couple times. Not a big deal. But this piece is really well designed. I really like this lower section. I think is designed very well. I really like the blowing stick that they have because it works really good for what they say it is. But it also gives you that capability of cooking hot dogs or marshmallows or, to be honest, any meat or anything that you can put on a stick. All in all. I don't have a whole lot of things to gripe about. So that's a good thing. When you have a product that's going on Kickstarter that actually has a purpose and is actually pretty cool, I really like that. I usually support those products. And this would be one that I would definitely support as well. So if you have any comments, questions, post below, share, like, comment, subscribe. Um, pretty cool. Serotonin, you, you did a good job on this product. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna use this a lot, but I love the fact that it was included. The little saw blade just to cut small branches. Well, let's take a peek real quick. How well does it actually do? You know, not too bad. Again, survival situation, you're not gonna expect that to be super crazy tough to cut a tree down, but at least it'll actually get you, oh man, I really need to cut that and it's, it's just not breaking or something. Handy. Handy. I love I love handy. And then to break it down, uh, it's obviously the opposite, right? We just tweak this guy out. And maybe one thing that I would recommend including with the stove would be a cloth to wipe everything down, right? That would probably be the one thing that they didn't include with this that I would probably recommend including just a small cloth just to clean things up because every time you put this away, it's gonna be, well, it's gonna be dirty and nasty. Um, yeah, you can rinse it off, but no matter what you do, I'm gonna stick that in here, um, it's gonna be, it's gonna get dirty real quick the more you use it. And so having like a, just a small cloth might be really handy. That would be one other item. And obviously any, in my kit, I would add it, right? But um, I think that might be the one thing that I, from serotonin that I would say throw in the bag.
or put it as a, you know, uh, a goal uh, within Kickstarter itself to get to. Oh, forgot to put that in there. So thanks for watching here to the very end, guys, here on Camp Geeks. Um, I hope nothing but the best for these guys. I think they're doing great and uh, can't wait to see how everything goes. So I'm going to track this Kickstarter as it goes. And if you have time, uh, go to the link at the top of the description and uh, check it out on Kickstarter. Otherwise, thanks for sharing this time with me here on Camp Geeks. If you have any questions, again, post below. Like it if you could for me. I'd appreciate it. And subscribe to the channel. We got lots of good stuff. So we'll see you again soon.